Okay, so what happened is I went to bolt the uh, this new plastic chute housing thing on and it wouldn't fit on and I couldn't line up the carriage bolts like I'd line them up but they weren't long enough and I looked and this metal right here had bowed out and this metal right in here had bowed out from rocks being pushed by the impeller on a gravel driveway. So I pounded that back in but in doing so I realized that there were already some cracks here and a crack here and a crack here and that's making this whole housing wiggly and woggly and you know you pick it up and uh, you're trying to I'm sure if you were trying to snow blow with this it would feel cheap and junk so uh, I took out the two bolts that hold this whole thing on it's only two bolts there's one here which goes in there and one here and on the other side is you know same thing on the other side and so when you pull those two bolts out these little hangers right here hang over uh, where this thing yeah, it hangs over this little bar right here. So really it's two bolts and the whole front blower housing comes off. Now when I got it off, I gave this a wiggle like that and the pulley was just waggling like that. This bolt, or sorry, this nut had backed way off or somebody had had this part, I don't know. Anyway, I've tightened that up. Probably would have been a good idea to put some Loctite on that, but I don't have any. So what I'm gonna do now is just clean this area up uh, with the die grinder and then I'll be ready to give it a little hit with the wire feed welder. You don't need any kind of fancy welder for this. I have a Get a welder, wire feed welder with MIG gas. You don't need that. Flux core will do just fine. If you're really good with stick welding, you could try stick welding with a low amperage, but I'm not good enough with a stick welder to do the middle of this thin with a thick with a stick. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be back. This is all reinforced and here and here. So I think we're all ready to go. I'm gonna put this body back on the body. I'm not sure how easy that's gonna be able to... Okay, so it took me a few little tries to get it going. It is a one person job. Was I put the belt on the large pulley that's attached to the shroud and then I kept the belt kind of squeezed together like that with my, I don't know, right hand as I rotated the whole chute up onto the little pegs or the, the you know, the the slots that you slot the chute into the housing and then rotated the whole thing together and then drove in the bolts that are 916 head in there on both sides. Now the bolt on the other side was stripped so I just took a nut and uh, a lock washer and a nut and put it on there. It's not going to interfere with any of the pulleys or belt operation so we're good there. And then to reinstall the belt on the engine pulley basically I uh, just took a little bit of finagling you know, not easy with one hand, but anyway, it slips back on over the engine crank pulley without any trouble. And now when I squeeze, not that, when I squeeze this one, that engages the auger. Okay, so we're back to where we were with this shroud all repaired, and welded back in place. And next we got to put this silly thing back on here. And... What do you know, that fits great now. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this to fit it up into that slot where it goes right up there. And this goes up here, and this all sits on there like that. Okay, so we're back at it. Um, I got the bolts down here and on the other side of the chute in and tight. And now it's time to put the shroud back on. Realize why this bolt wasn't coming out is because it's got a little retainer on the inside. These covers are cheap and flimsy and you can see a crack there and certainly a crack there. So, you know, they don't need to be super tight. You're not holding the engine together. You're holding the cover on. So I'm going to put it on, but not put it on that tight. Let's see if we can do something in here. This view right here. Make sure the belt's on before you put the cover back. I already checked it is. And I always recommend starting things by hand before you hit it with power tools, even though that's not what I'm going to do right now. You can see how I was pretty tender at the start of it, just to be sure it wasn't cross-threaded. I would not have done that if it was a bolt that was going to be hard to repair if it got damaged. And it's always a good idea to spray a little lubricant, any any seize anti-corrosion on there. Ah, where'd that go? Where'd that go? 
because if it's not you that's taking this apart, the next guy will appreciate it. Okay, so there, project is 